Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, welcome to IASA. Uh, we have today uh, our workshop on the specific category and uh, on the standard scenarios. Thank you for all of you. Uh, today we have uh, quite a number of attendants and uh, it will be very helpful to have uh, a first discussion on the what could be methodology for the uh, development of a risk assessment for operation in the specific category. Um, we will have uh, uh, today quite uh, a busy agenda and uh, as you know uh, we split the uh, workshop in, into sessions. So the first session is uh, dedicated uh, to illustrate what is the, um, mec the methodology what could be, uh, what is our proposal process uh, for defining a standard scenario? And then uh, the second and third day, instead, we will dedicate to discuss more in depth uh, the first standard scenario that we would like to publish in the next future. Uh, so, this will be the agenda for today. Um, we have uh, first an introduction to the specific category, and then we will go more in deep uh, on the risk assessment. We will have uh, the three elements of the risk assessment, safety, privacy, and security. And we will have uh, some uh, um, knowledge expert that will uh, discuss uh, these elements for uh, all the, the, the three domain. And then uh, in the afternoon, we'll uh, discuss the process, propos proposing a standard scenario, and then uh, what could be the structure of the standard scenario that uh, we will going to uh, publish uh, at the end of this year. So if it's okay, I think that we can uh, uh, start uh, with the, the first topic. And... Uh, uh in the way we will uh, sty try to uh, manage uh, this today and tomorrow also is uh, to um, try to ask uh, to, uh, to allow you to ask questions and also as for uh, to provide as much as information as we can. So we are using Slido, and uh, here uh, you can see the the hashtag that we can you can use and how you can uh, uh, join the the event code and uh, provide question uh, to us and then uh, we will uh, give uh, uh, we'll sure answer to the question that we'll have uh, more votes then we will see how we'll be able to manage uh, to answer to as much as possible of you, to your questions today we will also record this event and uh, then we will make it available on our uh, youtube channel so in this way people that are not attended but also uh, uh, we can then review it and uh, and hope that will be useful also for the future to have uh, uh, some good indication on how to uh, do the risk assessment. So, um, first of all, uh, I would like to give uh, a status on the regulation on the open and specific category. Uh, as you know, uh, we published the opinion in February of uh, this year and uh, soon after, the European Commission start the discussion on, on the document. As you are aware, uh, according to the uh, latest uh, requirements from the basic regulation, we s had to split the what was at the beginning in our MPA, one single document, to split in two acts. One implementing act on the operation registration and one delegated act on technical requirements. Uh, from a content point of view, there was not much difference. The difference is more on the procedure that uh, these two documents need to follow in order to be approved. Uh, so you can see here that we have two parallel uh, stream and uh, uh, they are much, much more linked uh, to the, the schedule provided by uh, a, city, a number of events that needs to, to happen. So uh, the European Commission already started uh, since the beginning to have a, a series of meetings uh, for the two documents. Uh, with uh, member states in the ASA committee, this is more for the implementing act, and to, uh, with all these uh, stakeholders um, activating an expert group 
uh, in which they presented their uh, uh, legislative act, so they transformed uh, our opinion in their legislative act. Uh, they presented to the, the, the two groups, they received comments, they uh, adapted, adapted the, uh, the regulation to those comments, and in an in a iterative process, uh, the document was reviewed several times, and uh, is still today under revision. In the meantime, uh, they also started the inter-service consultation where all the uh, service from the European Commission provide comments uh, to, the, to, to both documents, and everything will be combined to have at the end uh, the, the final uh, uh, result. Uh, all this schedule needs to be uh, combined with the approval of the basic regulation, and uh, I think that here I can give the floor to Kunde Vos, that here where he can give some uh, more insight on what are the activities going on on the basic regulation and how then we will uh, reach the final results of the adoption of uh, the regulation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a pleasure to see so many people <laughs> that have turned off for this important seminar. I think it's very important because we want to open up the drone service market and we think that the standard scenarios should become a very, very powerful tool to open up this, the drone service market. And with this, the opening of the market, we want to really see the drone technologies translate into what count for the European citizens' growth and jobs, innovative jobs. We are also happy that EASA and, and the whole process follows an, um, a strong, robust, global approach of JARUS, where we have here an important member of the JARUS process amongst us who will explain the SOAR process. It is important because we think that if we follow a global process, we facilitate the work for our operators and for our businesses. This is a global technology. We want to open up not only the Euro European market, but also look at the global market. We will today not only look at safety, but also hear about security and privacy. We think that is of utmost importance also to maintain societal acceptance. If we cannot maintain the trust of the citizens, the drone technology and drone service market might backfire. And we have to make, make sure that we, we englobe the different dimensions, not to forget the noise and the environmental dimension. Another aspect that we have to keep in mind when developing standard scenarios is the automation of the authorization. How can we see the CEAs, which will be confronted with a huge number of requests to fly, to operate, and they will still in a paper mode to every time check and approve an, uh, an operation. That is not possible. We have not we have to look at ways to automate the authorization process. And we think that developing the right standard scenarios also will uh, be instrumental in developing this way of automation. Now, the challenge for us is to make sure that the standard scenarios that we are developing really open up operations which are in market demand, where we really open up a business in, in a meaningful way, really open, it, open up businesses. And that's why we have to come up with descriptions of scenarios, which not only are clear, sufficiently clear, but also cover a, su a sufficient number of operations which are in demand. And that's where we have to, st to strike the balance. And that will be a real challenge for us. And at the end of the day, if we are looking for standard scenarios which would become applied, applicable all over Europe, they should become mutually recognized. So they should become, in one way or another, binding. And that is also one of the things that we have to think through, and that would be also one of the, the, the places where the EU could add value that we have the principle of mutual recognition throughout the European market and hence create a European service market. Now, where are we somewhere exactly with the adoption of the new basic regulation? 
the text was, you know, that the political compromise was, had, has taken place in December of last year. And then the formal process of translating and the formal process within Council and Parliament has, have taken place. The Council has adopted, formally adopted the text on the 12th of June. The Parliament on the 26th of June. The text was signed on the 4th of J July and will be published the 22nd of August. 22nd of August entering into force 20 days later on the 11th of September. So then we have at the principal level that enormous piece of regulatory instrument in place, giving the legal basis and the principles and the process and the tools to really start implementing and elaborating, further elaborating our drone regulatory framework. And this then will provide us with a legal basis to adopt by the end of the year both the Delegated Act and the Implementing Act. We will try to keep them together, although they, they formally follow a slightly different way. So this is as, as a scene setter for, for this three-day seminar. I hope that I clarified a little bit where exactly we are, what the purpose is of what we should be developing in the coming three days, but also thereafter, and make sure that we are, use, we are building the standard scenarios as tools to open up the European drone service market. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kun. Okay, so is there any questions so far on uh, this first part of the discussion? Okay, uh, we can have a couple of slides just to have an introduction to the specific category to set the scene on uh, what we are going to discuss uh, later. Uh, as you remember, in the for the specific category, the essential element is the risk assessment. And we have a requirements on the regulation in which we identify what, what are the elements that should be identified in the risk assessment. And um, these are requirements for the US operator. So every time they want to start an operation that is exceeding the limitation identified in the open category, so that means that fits in the specific category, so they need to carry out uh, this kind of risk assessment. So uh, you can see most of uh, the, the requirements are related to different elements of uh, safety, but also we included uh, the applicable security, privacy rules, and Im impact on the environment. So it's important that uh, all the different aspects of the operation are taken in, into account. And the, opera the, the operator has a broad view of, of what, what could be the risk of the operation, and then uh, through the risk assessment, it should be guided to uh, identify what could be acceptable um, mitigation measures to make the operation fly, uh, to fly secure, uh, safe, and to respect also privacy. So what, this is what we will try to do today, uh, to, to show how the methodology that uh, we are going to, to propose can guide the uh, the US operator. An, an essential uh, element, uh, so uh, well, let's uh, first of all see the process, what the process uh, could be. So first of all, the US operator needs to carry out the risk assessment. Uh, we, we can uh, say that for the uh, safety, they can use SORA, the, the one developed by Jarus uh, that we'll see later, or other equivalent methodology. Then they need to submit the application uh, to the competent authority uh, unless they hold the look and, and light a managed uh, US operator certificate. Uh, after the, the competent authority review uh, the mitigation measures proposed by the, uh, the operator, and uh, when they are satisfied that they, they make the operation safe, then they will send the authorization to the US operator, and then the operator can uh, uh, start the operation. Another possibility that uh, we implement, we are trying to implement now, is uh, the development of standard scenario. So standard scenario uh, will be the, 
the, some documents issued by EASA uh, in which we will identify uh, the, um, the envelope of the operation and uh, uh, we will carry out the risk assessment and we will uh, identify what are possible mitigation measures. So in this case, if a standard scenario is available, the operator uh, needs to submit a declaration or application. We will see also later uh, how uh, we are structuring uh, the, the different standard scenario when uh, they are made in a way that uh, they can uh, uh, allow the operator just to submit the declaration, uh, just to anticipate when uh, the, uh, the standard scenario will have some more prescriptive uh, and detailed mitigation measures such that the operator doesn't have much room for flexibility, so just need to follow the recipe, so in this case he, he can just uh, send the declaration, or where, when uh, the standard scenario uh, will uh, be a little bit more generic, will provide some flexibility, and so the operator needs to negotiate with uh, the uh, competent authority on the, um, on the uh, uh, mitigation measures. I need to inform that uh, uh, this moment we are having a discussion, uh, especially with uh, the legal service of the European Commission on the, uh, the standard scenario. So especially uh, the format, so um, in which way we can allow uh, op operator to fly just under declaration. Uh, this discussion is uh, going on and uh, there could be some changes in the next future so at this moment i cannot uh, i'm not able to anticipate how change will be so what we will discuss today reflects what is at this moment in the opinion and uh, in the first version of legislative act but especially for the uh, standard scenario and the declaration there could be some evolution and we will keep you informed as soon as uh, we have this information so, uh, when the, the operator submits the declaration or the application, then in case of uh, declaration, the, the National Competent Authority will just acknowledge that they received this, uh, the, um, the declaration of the standard scenario and uh, uh, they will just, uh, we the operator needs just to make sure that all the elements that are in declaration are checked, so he will have a, a sort of recipe to follow, and then uh, after the acknowledgement of receipt, he can just start the operation, or when uh, the operator needs to uh, send a a an application, uh, in this case, the national authority will review the mitigation measures and will send the authorization to the operator. So this will be the process that we will use. So the key key elements is now to carry out a risk assessment that is uh, meaningful, that is covering all different aspects. And so this is now what we will focus and uh, what we will discuss. So we'll start now with the introduction to SORA. And uh, uh, this, this, uh, this introduction will be provided by Lorenzo Mursilli. Um, I think that most of you knows Lorenzo. He's uh, uh, working in the uh, Swiss um, National Authority in FOCA, but he is also the leader of JARS Working Group 6, that is uh, the, the working group that developed uh, the SORA, and uh, this is the, the MC that we would like to propose uh, for the development of risk assessment for safety. So I invite here uh, Lorenzo to take the floor. Thank you. <laughs> 